Come on, tell your neighbor, get ready for another dimension of the glory. Come on. When Jesus hung on that cross, went to the grave, went to the very pits of hell, rose again, sat right on the right side of the Father, and he looked at you, he looked at me, and he says, welcome to the glory. How many are glad for the majestic glory of God? Come on. Come on. See, it says, listen to this in Psalms 145. Don't sit down. I'm done. But I just want to just release this for you. 145 says this. Listen to this. I will meditate on the glorious splendor of your majesty. I will set my mind on your glory of your splendor, of your majesty. And it goes on to say, and on your wondrous works. See, see, we as a church, there's something fresh taking place in this season. And where's it going to happen at? The church. The ones who allowed him to posture you, position you for a greater power. Dunamis. See, dunamis always brings favor. And favor brings influence. And when you live out of the realm of his majestic glory, because you've studied his glory, it becomes every fiber of your essence of your being. You live in a supernatural expectation. And Isaiah 61 becomes something that's a reality. That you're called to be just like Jesus. Rebuild the ruined city. And see the restoration of the desolation of generations. Tell your neighbor, change lives. Come on. How? Change lives. Come on. There was a well in you. And Jesus said in John 7, 37, 38. Out of that well, because of John 4, 14. Out of that well shall flow streams of living water. And it says in Isaiah 41, wherever these rivers flow in the desolate heights because there are needy, thirsty people, these rivers begin to flow and harvest begins to take place. And what the enemy meant for ashes, you begin to see trees of righteousness well planted of the Lord. The cities are rebuilt. Lives are restored. The desolation of a thousand years of heritage is poured back on their life that sets the foundation for their children's children's children. The Lord wants to do something more than just, and we love revelation, but how many are ready for activation of manifestation? Come on. We create, we create as a, you can feel it in this place, in a heart of one accord. In unity of the believers, a supernatural expectation of the glory of God that there's nothing impossible for him. If you believe that today, give the Lord a great shout. Come on. Can we do something together? Okay. All right, so there's one thing I'd like to do. Come on back up. Because we both have been delivered from addictions. So there's power. One puts 1,000 to flight, two put 10,000 to flight, right? So here's another picture the Lord showed me about that trampoline deal. So the hard thing about letting go of an addiction is the known devil, is you think, is better than the unknown devil. You know, the thing that you're relying on that's a counterfeit, at least you know it. But if you let go of it, then you think you're going to be worse off. Here's the things I was hearing. Ambient. Some people think you have to have Ambien in order to sleep. It's a brutally bad drug, okay? You, you think, well, at least I'm sleeping with it, and if I stop taking it, I won't be able to sleep. I'm telling you right now, God's got a better way. Now, I'm not telling you to stop taking medication. You know, you got to be led by the Spirit. But here's the picture I want you to see. When you let go, you feel like you're falling, right, and that you're dropping down and that you're going lower. But remember what I said. You're not hitting the ground. You're hitting a trampoline. So when you let go and you jump, you're actually hitting something that makes you go higher. And then when you go higher, you're not hitting the flat surface. You're hitting another trampoline. So you just keep going higher and higher in the Lord as long as you're willing to let go. Now, here's the verse, okay? So this is right out of Isaiah. 
verse, uh, I'm sorry, chapter 14, verse 12 says, How you have fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning. He didn't hit a trampoline. <laughs> See, he was kicked out. How you are cut down to the ground, you who weaken the nations, for you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit on the mount of the congregation. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. But this is the part you guys got to hold on to. You shall be brought down into Sheol, Satan. So what's the addiction? Is it some kind of uh, prescription drug? Maybe you hurt your back and you went and you got opioids for the painkiller and now you can't stop. God is bigger than those things. God is bigger than alcohol. God is bigger than even caffeine addiction could be another problem. Television, shopping, come on, how far do we want to go here? These are all counterfeit aff affections that we're looking to to satisfy us. Food could be a problem, right? But God is greater than all those things. So that's what I want to do. I just want to break off an addiction because here's the kicker, man. Verse 16 says, those who see you, Satan, will gaze at you and consider you saying, is this the man who made the earth tremble, who shook kingdoms, who made the world as a wilderness and destroyed cities, who did not open the house of his prisoners? Well, guess what? God is opening the house of the prisoners because it's going to break off addiction. So we can just agree now as two people who've been delivered, don't even want it anymore. Don't even want it. Like the wanter just emptied out. It's, it would be way worse if you still wanted it and you were just relying on your willpower. You can't rely on your willpower. It's got to be God's power. Amen. So just just lift your hands, whatever that thing is. I don't need you to, to uh, you know, sp specify. It. You know what the thing is because you can't stop. That's the test. You think you can quit and then you try to quit and you can't. Well, just say stop. God is bigger than Satan. And, and that addiction is not going to hold on to me. I'm going to look at Satan and say, is this the one <laughs> that we were so afraid of? No way. They're going to gaze at you and consider you saying, is this the man who made the earth tremble? You're not making me tremble anymore, Satan. Could you just break that power of that addiction? Right. He's right. So right now you can be free. You can be free. And just like what Pastor Peter said about it, when I quit drinking out of sheer willpower, but I end up going back to it, and it was worse than before. When the Lord brings deliverance, he severs. He severs. And then he plugs you into a new source called rich, flourishing oil. Amen. And as he strengthens you, part of the strength of God is able to say with resistance to the enemy, for temptation and the desire because he takes the desire completely so this morning when the, the bible says when the enemy's found out and light shines he must flee darkness flee so he's been found out of that which has caused you to tremble or be bound and today in the name of jesus every manner Every addiction, everything that has control, that you've lost control, is now broken yeah. in the name of Jesus. It now is severed, severed. Very source of it is severed in the name of Jesus. And we pray for fresh oil of the Holy Spirit or the glory of God to transform you from glory to glory. Once where you were weak, you will now be strong, and you'll go from strength to strength in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen? Amen. So, Lord, take away the power of that thing to influence me and seduce me. If you're struggling with pornography, men, mostly usually men, Say, I'm not gonna, that's not going to be appealing to my eyes anymore. I break that false covenant with that kind of stimulation. That is not going to stimulate me anymore because I'm going to focus on the holy things of God. Whatever, whatever strength I was getting from that counterfeit, Lord, take the nutrition of that thing away from me that I could feed on you. I'm going to fast and pray and picture myself going higher and higher. Every time I let go of something, I'm going to hit a trampoline and go up to the next level. <laughs> Take me higher into you because there's no limit how high we can go in God. I speak it over this congregation, everybody listening, that you are free in Jesus. As Keith said earlier, we just agree. One puts 1,000 to flight, two put 10,000 to flight. Who the sun sets free, say it out, is, is free, free indeed. indeed. You're awesome. We love you.